So ever since Nintendo decided to stop competing on power against the other guys in the Wii generation of gaming, ushering in the motion-based control that absolutely went over huge with the mainstream, more casual gaming audience, I think you can argue that they've become somewhat of a trendsetter in gaming as we saw the other big companies hop on to the motion hype back in the day, and we are now in the Nintendo Switch era of gaming, starting to see a similar landscape shift when it comes to the amount of portable consoles that are popping up and being sold and available on the market right now. And in today's video, I want to break down all of the different emerging handheld competitors that we are seeing for the Nintendo Switch and discuss how Nintendo may have just changed the gaming landscape as we know it forever. What's up, Nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunburn Nation by subscribing below, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, today we are discussing Nintendo and what they may have just once again done in the current gaming landscape we are in, as if you look back at history, you can see that when they veered off and done their own thing, starting with the Wii generation of games, because all the way up to that point in time, I think you can argue that they were competing directly on power against the other big names in the gaming industry being Sony at that point in time and the emerging Microsoft with their Xbox console. It always seemed to be based around who had the best graphics, who had the best frame rates, and who had the most advanced cutting edge tech when it came to games. And we saw Nintendo make a very unique pivot at that time that many gamers question, myself included, growing up watching the trailers for the Wii be revealed. Like, first of all, what is a Wii? And I, am I interested in this? Why does it look like I'm holding a TV? remote instead of a classic game controller that I know and love from the NES, SNES, and N64 era, and the GameCube arguably being one of my favorite controllers of all time, why does this thing look like a TV remote? But Nintendo knew what they were doing, and they were targeting a very casual gaming audience during that generation to appeal to the masses, and boy did they do it, they sold over 100 million total consoles in the Wii's life cycle, although I do think you can argue that the software attach rate didn't go along quite as well as what we were seeing with the true success of the Switch and having a core audience nowadays, but it still created that urgency around other companies not wanting to miss out on this trend that Nintendo identified, and you had companies late to the game like Microsoft and Sony create their own products with Microsoft focusing and launching Xbox Connect, where they tried to rely on a camera system. We even saw them bundle that into their next generation console on the Xbox One and the 360. It was sold as an add-on and marketed very heavily in all of their E3 presentations at that time because Microsoft felt like they missed out on that casual gamer. There's even things in the Xbox documentary referencing how furious Bill Gates was that they didn't think of motion being a wanted demand amongst consumers and we had sony follow suit with their playstation move on the ps3 era but because these consoles were not centrally focused around the motion play they did not see anywhere near that kind of mainstream adaptation and success like nintendo did betting the farm on motion in their particular console generation when it comes to the wii and what we are seeing right now with all of these new announcements in the marketplace around either hybrid or handheld focused consoles that look quite honestly very similar to the Nintendo Switch, I believe history is repeating itself. And while we may not see companies like Sony and Microsoft hop on board to this hybrid or portable trend, we may or may not. I think Microsoft is focused on xCloud and just being able to play wherever you are on any device and they honestly don't care what you're using. We may just see Game Pass turn into to a Netflix style thing where it is literally just buy Game Pass, be subscribed to our game service, and we don't care how you're playing. Sony, I can see potentially coming back into the more hybrid console edition, or maybe they just go crazy and bring back the PSP, but dockable, and maybe it's more similar to what a Series S would be, meaning like, yes, it plays PS5 level games, but you're not going to get it at that next level frame rate and the higher resolution. It is a possibility, but one thing that absolutely is outside of that conversation taking place right now is all of the other companies noticing this demand for handheld gaming in 2022 as we have the most notable one and a true competitor to the Nintendo Switch but I believe targeting somewhat of a different audience as this is the PC gamer audience which there is absolutely some overlap there is also a lot of separation in that target audience and we are of course talking about the Valve Steam Deck that by all accounts has been seeing a lot of success and I think 
think PC gamers are absolutely seeing the appeal of being able to take whatever library of games you have on the go with you. And it kind of makes me look around in the room and realize that if Nintendo did choose to do a much more powerful Nintendo Switch edition, even at a premium price, we could be playing a lot of the third party titles that are available on the Steam Deck as part of that library right now on the go, however we want it. And that is why I'm hopeful we will get that. But regardless of all of that, we also recently had announcements like the Logitech G Cloud, which is more of a cloud focused portable handheld device. But you can clearly see that it targets a form factor similar to the Nintendo Switch. And in the same way that Apple sets the trend in a lot of smartphones and you start to see the other companies somewhat adapt to that quote unquote premium looking style, I do think that you are also seeing something similar take place with Nintendo and this unique Switch design as there are just more and more attempts at it. And most recently, we got the announcement of the Razer Edge, which is actually, in my opinion, a fantastic looking handheld. And I did look over some of the specs of this thing, and it's rather impressive. Yes, you can do cloud streaming apps on this, but it is not marketed as a cloud device, but rather something that will run a native version of Android that yes, you can run emulators on. Yes, you can run native Android games that are in the marketplace, and you can even run things like xCloud and essentially anything that is gaming in the Android or Google Play Store will be available on this device. And I think that this makes a lot of sense, especially for kids growing up right now in this modern era where the app stores available right now have a plethora of games to select. And while a lot of them are gotcha games or things to get you hooked in free and then you are, end up start spending money, yes, that is a common tactic, but there are also quality titles in there. And I do think that this is something that is truly caused by the success of the Nintendo Switch as we look around and realize that we are not done with the current life cycle of the Nintendo Switch. And we also don't know that Nintendo is getting away from this hybrid form factor anytime soon. We're already over 111 plus million total units sold, and there's no telling on where or if it really slows down dramatically from here. And if it does, it may just be time for a simple refresh. And then we're looking at another 50 to 60 million units sold in this current hybrid form factor for Nintendo. And yes, they struck gold with this idea. And now you just have the other companies in the room realizing how successful and how much of a market there is for taking your games on the go in the modern era. And I just think that it's interesting to see that, yes, while Nintendo has some of the craziest ideas and sometimes they have straight up flops like the Wii U with how that was handled and marketed and it saw nowhere near the success of the other consoles we've talked about from them. But every now and then they're overly creative and strange minds that work at the company and develop all of this in their R&D department. And when it ultimately comes to market with a truly successful idea, they can indeed strike gold. And it is interesting to me to see the landscape of gaming shift and I am on board personally for the ride of the hybrid era of gaming going forward. If I had it my way going forward, we would have multiple more generations of this hybrid console just with premium tier hardware available. My only gripe with the Nintendo Switch is that we are still running that Tegra X1 that is clearly showing its age at this point. And if we had something like a $400, $500 premium tier console or the enthusiasts out there that, that want more graphical performance, I would love to see Nintendo hop on that train and keep this thing going for the foreseeable future until one day when technology ultimately shifts and we probably go into a fully different scenario when maybe hybrid gaming doesn't make sense anymore. For the time being, I think having your full library of Nintendo games and hopefully more third party games as time goes on to be able to natively experience whether that is on the go or on a dock on a TV. I think it's genius. I think other companies are realizing this and I think that Nintendo has ultimately shifted the landscape of where we are at in gaming and going forward in 2022 forever. But I want to hear from you guys at this point in the video, all your personal thoughts and feelings around the hybrid era for gaming, because yes, it is very different than what we historically saw Nintendo do before. And there's even some people, myself included, that do have some nostalgia for having things things like a GameCube and a Game Boy Advance or the DS and 3DS era of gaming sold alongside of Nintendo's mainline home consoles because we got double games. You had two Mario games come out, you had two Zelda games come out, and they were in alternating phases because Nintendo had to support both libraries. Clearly, there's some downsides to merging everything into one, but I also think that at the end of the day, all things considered, we have a fantastic library of games on the Switch, and being able to play any of them at any time, however you want, is more appealing to me. But definitely 
definitely share with me your thoughts on whether or not you want to see Nintendo continue to support hybrid consoles going forward, or if you think that it is time for a new idea and maybe they split off into a traditional and a handheld again. And what do you think about this handheld gaming marketplace that we are seeing rapidly explode from all of the other guys realizing how successful the Nintendo Switch and this portable form factor is? Do you think this continues to grow and we just have numerous options? Or do you think this is a survival of the fittest thing where one or two brands will survive and maybe the Steam Deck ultimately one day after multiple revisions down the line is a true up competitor in that mobile gaming space. And while you could argue it somewhat already is, I also don't think it's directly stealing a lot of sales from Nintendo as far as their Switch user base, at least in the masses. And finally, let me know what you think about the Razer Edge, this new console that it was revealed. It will have a 5G version available as well. What do you think about the specs and the features of the device as a whole? And are you interested in it at all personally when it does release later in the future? So regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today, I do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video, as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around this topic. Go watch yesterday's video next if you haven't already, which is on screen right now. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.